My name is Joseph Sakovac, and my mentor is Thomas DeLillo at Wichita State University. And we did a project called Numerical Map Conformal Mapping and Fluid Flow. In this project, we used something called Theodorson's method to attain a boundary correspondent between two domains. This method can be used to approximate real-world situations, and we can also generate new ideas as to what research can be done in applied fields such as engineering, and we can also make decisions as to what we may or may not spend money on in experimentation. And, well, we wished originally to test these models against actual data from a wind tunnel. We did not get to do that, but we did actually get to model our equations. So before we begin, we have to establish some definitions. A conformal map is a map which, confor which preserves angles, but not necessarily lengths. So if you have a point at some angle in one domain, it will be at the same angle in the domain you're mapping to. Conjugation, a lot of people hear about this in their college algebra courses where they have x plus iy and when you conjugate it, it becomes x minus iy. The same is true for complex valued functions, where you have some u of xy plus iv of xy, and then you simply change the addition to the subtraction to conjugate it. Here is our stream function. We use this, to, and we solve it as a differential equation, and then we obtain its gradient and use that to plot streamlines. In this case we do it in a circle domain with the unit circle. And to finish up our definitions we need to know what an analytic function is. An analytic function simply means the trace of its Hessian is equal to zero or its second derivatives that are not mixed partials at when added together are zero. So something to know before you try to do this is that in order to perform Theodorson's method, your region that you want to map to has to be star-like. That is, if you draw a point at some point in the target domain and you draw a line from it, it can only cross the boundary once. So if you were to draw something, it'd have to be approximately like a ellipse or a circle from at least that point you draw it from. And also your region cannot be flat because you cannot have the tangent on the shape run perpendicular to a line drawn from the boundary. So in Theodorus's method, it's a method of successive conjugation you use Fourier points to obtain a boundary correspondence, and then once you have this boundary correspondence, you can make a conformal map between two regions and also maps things like streamlines between the two domains. Here's just a little bit of code for the conjugation operator. If you look here, we have some function C, and then we let C be the conjugate of C right in the next line and then we obtain an approximation of phi. First we assume that phi is equal to theta but as you can see here phi when you iterate it is now equal to the real part of C plus theta. You do this over and over again until you get um, an error that is acceptable. And here's an example of a conformal map between an ellipse and a unit disk. As you can see, it works rather well. This is an eccentricity of 0.5, so it's not really flat. Okay, so why it's important that we get our conformal map is that sometimes plotting streamlines can be rather difficult, but if you have a conformal map, you can just plot these streamlines in a simple place like the circle domain. And with the conformal map, you have a boundary correspondence and you can map from 
the circle to say an ellipse in this case and thus you have the streamlines over your target now here's an example of streamlines over an ellipse <clears throat> now here we can change the angle of attack and our gamma which is our circulation here our angle of attack is pi over 12 and our gamma is zero, so no circulation. And here, the same angle, but we change the circulation. And here's what happens if the eccentricity gets a little too large, meaning this is what happens when our shape does get a little flat. But let's go back and talk about why it's important that we can change our circulation. In a previous project, we did a more direct method, just using a Joukowsky map it was very difficult for us to get circulation in any shape that would be kind of different from uh, an ellipse and it would lead to problems if we tried to add circulation in some cases so adding onto that here's an example of an inverted ellipse and, the f and this shows that we can actually perform this method on an inverted ellipse. And as you can see, when we change the circulation, this model still works. If you change the angle of attack in the circulation, it still works. So this is a good thing. Also, it's important to note that there are many different methods of obtaining a boundary correspondence. So what these methods all have in common is that all of these methods seek to create a boundary correspondence between two domains. Some of them even are used to model what we call multiply connected domains, in other words, multiple shapes or with holes in them. And a lot of them are very different. This method just happened to have a method called successful, successive conjugation that it uses. And other than that, their similarities usually end pretty quickly. So, in conclusion, we use Theodorson's method to map streamlines between two domains. We wished originally to compare this data against experimental data and also that of other models that are more modern. We did not quite get to do that, but in the future we t intend to do this. We also hope to use the wind tunnel at some point in order to get data for ourselves. Here are some references, and if you guys have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. The practical applications of this project, well, with Thea Dorson's method, it is usually, or at least was, originally used to model um, flow in streams and whatnot. Like, and it even, there's even allusions to the Darwinian flow. So this project in particular, we're just taking a look at some older methods and seeing if we can gain new information so that we can maybe even make better code for it so that even engineers might be able to use it to do things like model air flow over their airplane wings better. But there are mo more modern methods, but it's always good to obtain information from older models if possible. Oh, I had no idea what Fourier series is. To be completely honest, I still struggle with it and still have to learn. So the biggest issue was learning that method in general, like having to learn what a Fourier series is to begin with, because it was pretty important for the project.